Welcome back. Let's focus on the consumer space now. The second quarter business updates are coming in. We've got two of them. Uh, Avenue Supermarts posted a positive business update. On the back of that, the stock is doing well. Marigold, however, is a rare loser today on account of the company recording a low single-digit volume growth with margins being the same as they were the same time last year. Abnish Roy, who's the Executive Director of Institutional Equities at Edelweiss, joins us now. Abnish, of course, has been tracking the FMCG space very closely. Abnish, what do these numbers indicate for the entire FMCG space? All hopes were pinned on recovery in the second half, but we do have the second quarter to, you know, attend. Yeah, thanks, uh, Malu. Yes, definitely versus Q1, Q2 will be slightly tougher quarter on YOI basis. If you remember Q1, the base was a bit soft because of COVID. And also, a lot of the summer categories saw very high growth because of very harsh summer. None of these two factors are there. So we will see uh, companies definitely see rural volumes under pressure. Most of the companies will see urban growth being faster. If you see uh, DMART results and Marico results, that is coming out very clearly. We saw DMART's revenues up 36% uh, by a Y, 6% QOQ, while on the other hand, Marico, which does have uh, exposure to the rural segment, uh, we cannot compare uh, both companies like to like, but definitely rural is a challenge currently. Hopefully, H2 worst will be behind because of soft base and because monsoon has been good in 60% of the country and also uh, the farm prices are up. But uh, companies like Asian Paints, for example, the margin will be quite soft on YOI basis. So Asian Paint will see good numbers, uh, both on the volume front, price hike, uh, margins will see a good recovery on YOI basis. So yes, this quarter, if you see the raw material correction which we have seen, will not be really visible for most companies because higher price inventory will be there. The rupee depreciation is definitely going to impact. And some of the raw material for HUL, for example, in terms of caustic uh, soda, borax, etc., have been inflationary. So H2 is where we are expecting recovery both in the volumes and on the margin. So tough quarter Q2 for most companies. Okay, just to follow up then on DMART, you said that, of course, it's looking good this time around, but the stock has also uh, rallied, right? I mean, from the low that we saw in May of 3,200, the stock is back at 4,500 now, which is a 40% growth. Uh, do you think the best is in the price? No, we remain uh, positive on the long-term potential. If you see this quarter also, eight stores have been added. I think investors uh, in DMART look essentially at two things. One is how the store expansion is. Last three quarters, that has been strong. So we definitely see 50, uh, 40 to 50 stores addition being possible. And second is if you see clearly rural uh, currently is under stress. So most of the retailers are obviously in the urban areas. That's the second point. Third, of course, also because startup capital is uh, definitely drying up, all this competitive intensity from the e-commerce also, the quick uh, quick e-commerce, those will clearly intensity will reduce. So that's also something which is clearly there in the minds of customer. So essentially investors are flocking towards India, investors are flocking towards more defensive names where the concern on the interest rate hikes, et cetera, are not there, predictability or demand is there. So Avenue Supermart will be a play on those also, but from medium long-term perspective. Yeah. It's interesting that you say that uh, you think the intensity of e-commerce is probably going to reduce. That is probably also a read-through for the pharmacy sector. But uh, Abnish, you know, I wanted your thoughts. You said that you expect a volume recovery in the second half. That's probably when we'll you know, see a downside towards inflation after the RBI rate hikes actually come into effect totally. Uh, what is your assumption for volumes then for the second half? And cumulatively, where do you think uh, volumes would be for the entire fiscal? Sure. So definitely we'll have uh, a range of the volumes. For example, Asian paints, even for this quarter, we expect double digit volume growth and for the full year also. If I see staples, uh, some of the companies will have negative volumes in India. So uh, someone like a Imami, someone like, uh, uh, say, Tata Consumer, say, in the India part of the business, will have a negative volumes because of the rural stress. Uh, actually, if I see, uh, clearly did quite well in Q1 in terms of 6% volume growth. In Q2, of course, the soft base will not be available. Uh, my sense is uh, HUL should see 2 to 3% volume growth in Q2. Uh, this should accelerate in QH2 because of the uh, base uh, being favorable in terms of rural because the slowdown happened last year. And of course, what will happen is 
because of the raw metal deflation, we will see in uh, soaps, for example, promotions coming back. That will also help the volume growth. So yes, I do expect that uh, for the full year, maybe we should expect H2 being 2 to 3% higher volume for most of the companies. Uh, but definitely we'll be betting on companies which are diversified where raw material correction is starting. Two categories already seeing uh, uh, recovery in terms of demand are uh, biscuits and noodles. So that's why we like Nestle and Britannia. Those are definitely a play. And H2 will see more recovery happening. Right, biscuits and noodles doing well. <laughs> right now, we're all munching on them we for like, sure. Uh, like biscuits and noodles, I can assure you that. <laughs> whether or not we like Nestle. Yeah, and I, I know, biscuits for sure. <laughs> uh, Abneesh, you know, uh, I, I take your point on uh, promotions coming back, ad spends coming back, and this is something that we touched upon the last time as well, where uh, maybe the benefit of lower raw material prices will be invested back in volume growth via promotions and brand growth via ad spends, etc. And whether that comes into margins or not. But be that as it may, it is also the Q2 update season before the result season. In the next couple of days, we'll get uh, updates from Titan, Godrej Consumer and Dabur as well. What are your thoughts on that? Uh, which one would you pick? I think clearly uh, urban focus demand uh, companies will do better. So I would expect Titan to be do better, especially if you see because festive season is early this time, September month has been very good for discretionary part of the consumption. So I would say out of those three companies, Titan should do better. Out of Dabur and Godrej, my sense is Dabur should do better. Because in Dabur, if you remember previous quarter, the immunity was a issue in the base that is now resolved and uh, that was impacting both in terms of the mix and overall growth also. Uh, so I would say yes, uh, Titan should do better and uh, Dabur should do better than GCPL because GCPL issues on Indonesia continue to be there and HI continues to be uh, uh, impacted because of very high rainfall in 60% and 40% at deficit also. So that remains uh, impacted because of the season. Okay. All right, Abhish, we're going to leave it on that note. Thanks very much for joining in and speaking with us and discussing the entire FMCG space with us. Well, uh, let's focus on some map macros then. There was, in fact, a welcome relief when it came to India's trade deficit for the month of September. 